Well, all right, we are here 2022. We made it. Woohoo! Yes, enjoy. <laughs> it's a brand new year. So we have a few announcements for you today. Right. So we are just now kicking off our 21 days of prayer and fasting. So we hope that you are ready and excited and expecting great things for this time. Yeah. 21 days, just praying, just seeking the Lord first, fasting and losing a little bit of, you know, it's not the focus, but it is a good <laughs> byproduct. It is a good byproduct. Anyway, you know, so 21 days of prayer passing. Uh, we're teaming up with Church of the Highlands. You could go to their website. You could even go to 21 Days of Prayer, and they're doing a live stream every day. There's lots of resources that can help you just as we seek the Lord here at the beginning of the year. Also, we have coming up on the 23rd is going to be our 12-year anniversary as a church. And so 12 we, years. I know, 12 years. So we are going to be having a special breakfast. So we need you to come a little bit early yes. before service and bacon. have some good food. Is there going to be bacon there? Probably. Eggs. Probably. Some grits. Something. Come on, this is the South. <laughs> we got some grits, y'all. It's going to be good. There will so. be gluten-free option. Is there... Probably not. Probably <laughs> there's water. There's a there you go. Gluten free option. Some water there for some of you folks. Not to make light of your gluten. Anyway, so <laughs> it's uh, gonna be good. So make sure you remember to come early on the 23rd. Celebrate 12 amazing years with us. Yes, we can't yes. wait to see what the God else to come. has in store for us. Yes. Yeah. And also, you could give online at mycoastalchurch.com/giving. Uh, just. Go over, head over there right now, pop in that information. You can also do reoccurring gifts. Just want to challenge you, like if giving hasn't been part of your life, man, make 2022 just the year of, you know what, God, we're putting you first in our finances. That's so right. mycoastchurch.com slash giving. And, and then we've got a word coming up from you. We do. I am speaking this week. You spoke last week. Yeah. Great word on being in this world, but not of this world. This week, I am talking about offense. So don't be offended. Don't be offended. If, you know, <laughs> anyway. So, and then lastly, next week, we are back in person again. Right. So I want to challenge you guys. Listen, online, this is great. It's a wonderful option. Uh, we love it, especially this morning. But, man, to be in person, there's just something special when we come together in the house. So next week, uh, in person, Coastal Church, 10 a.m. We'll see you there. See you there. Let's go. Here we go. Offense. Hike. Well, hello, Coastal. Welcome to 2022. Man, it seems like just the other day it was 2021. It was. But hey, it is a brand new year. We're just believing God for some great things. Love to just kick off the new year with 21 days of prayer and fasting and uh, would ask and invite you to join in with us. Uh, whatever it is, just, just starting the year off with this idea of God, we are seeking you first. We want you more than anything. Show us, uh, change us, convict us. Lord, Holy Spirit, come into our lives. And so I want to challenge you uh, over these next 21 days to just be in prayer, be in fasting, that we would seek the Lord first this year and just believe in for some really amazing things to happen here in 20. 22. If you were with us last week, Devin spoke to us about being in the world, but not of the world. And if you if you didn't get to catch that message, I want to encourage you to go back, listen to that, because uh, I kind of want a little bit of a part two of that. I want to talk from Galatians 5 about the fruit of the Spirit, and I also want to talk to you about offense. Um, offense is one of these things that it's just, man, it seems like it is everywhere in our society today and it just it really has no place in the life for the believer for the follower of jesus offense has no place for us as a matter of fact if you grab the grow box this year one of the books inside of that is called the bait of satan i want to encourage you to get that to dive deep into that to just say listen I i'm tired of living this life where i'm just offended uh, about every little thing. So Galatians chapter 5, Paul writes this to the church and he says this, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, 
the results are very clear. It says, so these things are very clear. From following this sinful nature, it's uh, sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, um, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, selfish ambition, dissension, uh, drunkenness. Like He gives this whole list of the outworking of just following this sinful nature. But then he says this, but, but the Holy Spirit does this. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Joy and love and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. There is no law against these things. So all of these things, this is what the Holy Spirit does in our life. Now I've just been thinking about this particular scripture and, and thinking how this fruit that we want to produce, it's all done within the context of relationships. And there's two particularly uh, relationships that Paul points out and that I want to point out. And the first and the, the foremost is this, your relationship with the Holy Spirit, your relationship with Jesus. That th th this, is, this is first and foremost that if you don't have this, the Holy Spirit in you, you're not going to be able to produce this type of fruit. Without the Holy Spirit of God, you can't produce a person that, be the type of person that is this love and joy and peace and patience that you want to. You could, you could try really hard, and, and maybe at times you could produce something that is similar to it, but, but there's a joy that only comes from the Lord. There's a, a love that only He can give. There's a peace that only comes from Him. And, and see, if I try to do it in my own strength, that if I try to do it even within this sinful nature, the best I could hope for is just a cheap imitation. To have a peace that lasts as long as everything is going my way. To have a love that is, is within me as long as everybody around me is lovable. But the second someone comes into my circle that isn't lovable, that isn't peaceful, that doesn't have joy, all of a sudden I find mind fading as well, man, that is not the type of fruit that, that the Bible is talking about. Paul's talking about this deeper fruit that it, it goes beyond just uh, the present day or circumstances, but there is a peace that passes all understanding. There is a love that even when you put me on a cross, I can say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's the type of fruit I want to produce. There's a little uh, post, I guess you will, that's going around on Facebook and Instagram, and someone writes, hey, do you need the Holy Spirit to go to heaven? And to which someone replied, listen, you need the Holy Spirit to go to Walmart. <laughs> and I just thought that that sums it up so well, that like, man, we, we need the Spirit of God. We need to be in relationship with Jesus 24 hours a day, seven days a week. God, we need your peace. We need your joy. We need all of this because we're in this world, but not of this world. And so this relationship that we have, it's only through this that I can produce this type of fruit. Now, the second relationship is this, our relationship within humanity. Because uh, while my fruit is coming from this work of the Holy Spirit inside of me, it, it's best demonstrated inside community and inside of the world. And so in other words, like my patience is best demonstrated not when everything is going my way, but when someone irritates me, when someone cuts me off in traffic or cuts me in line at the store, like now, now is the time to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. It's demonstrated and it's produced in this world that we live in. It's, you know, kindness is produced around us. So it's this relationship. It's, it's hard to just simply be kind to yourself all the time. But no, to be kind to others and to be kind to those that, well, even sometimes don't seemingly deserve it to have this in us. This is where the fruit is produced. And it's just, it doesn't work solo. It has to be done inside 
the context of community. So the very nature of this fruit that we want to produce, it involves others rubbing us the wrong way. And, and it gives room. It gives room to these, these irritations, these offenses, these, these things that don't go our way. It gives room for a choice. See, a choice is always taken to, to say either I'm going to be offended or I'm going to let this thing go. See, offense is always a choice. And, and it's not chosen by those around us. It's first chosen within us. See, we could see people as the cause of our irritation, or we could see people as, listen, listen, it's just the seed for me to produce more fruit in my life, to help me grow up in wisdom and stature and knowledge and favor, and to produce this type of life that looks more and more like Jesus. And so there's this moment in which I make a choice. Either I can let this come in and be a fertilizer to my soul, or I can let it be a poison to me, a poison that, that grips me. And, and, and instead of producing this type of fruit, I just become bitter and angry and upset. All of these things, it's a choice. This morning, I want to give you three enemies to this type of, of fruit. And the outwork of it is the soil in which the offense can grow in this if we allow these things to happen. The first is this, always having to demand your rights. Always having to have it your way. Well, listen, I am right. These are my rights. I am do these things, and therefore, you have to do what's owed me. Now, this is a tough one, especially here in America, where man, everything is about our rights and, and, and what's owed us. But here's the thing. If we live like this, this is the soil of disappointment. Like, I, I, I just guarantee you, listen, there's going to be times where you're going to just be disappointed. You're going to be let down, where, where things don't go your way, and, and you don't get everything you thought you were going to get. And, and it's this type of attitude in which the world is against me, and, and I should have it my way. And don't they understand how, how that makes me feel? And it's all about my emotions, and it's all about my needs. And we become the most important person in our universe. And that is a sad place to be. Where you, where everything in this world revolves around you, man, there's nothing more depressing. Rather than understanding, listen, it's all grace. This is just all by the grace of God. The next one is this, unrealistic expectations. See, oftentimes there's this gulf. There's what uh, you expect of someone, and then there's what they produce. And there's often a big space in between them. There, there, there's what I think you should have done, and there's what you really did. And, and the level in which you disappoint me becomes this breeding ground for offense. It becomes a space in which, uh, listen, I, I don't understand why you would do it this way, and so now I'm offended because you didn't rise to the level of my expectations. And we see this all the time. We see it in our relationships. We see it in our marriages. We see it just in our churches because someone disappointed us because we thought they should perform at this level. We thought they should do this. We thought life would look like this and they didn't reach that level. So in between is the amount of offense and disappointment that can grow in my soul. And here's the thing about offense, like it always wants to grow down to the soil of bitterness. It, all, it always wants to produce this type of anger and frustration at the world rather than just giving it to God and saying, you know what, Lord, I give it to you. Uh, I heard someone say it like this, leadership, this was their definition of leadership. They said leadership is disappointing people at a rate in which they can handle I just thought that was so good. Leadership is disappointing people at a rate in which they can handle. In other words, you have these expectations, but I'm going to disappoint you at a rate in which you can, can, can still follow along and not get offended. And, and I, I, I thought about this. And I thought how just how beautiful Jesus did this, right, with his disciples. Because all of these disciples had this certain expectation of Jesus. They thought that, when, listen, when the Messiah comes, this is what he's going to look like. 
And listen, messiahs don't ride donkeys. They're, they're, he's not going to get put on a cross and die. No, he's going to come. He's going to conquer Rome. And we're not going to be enslaved to these people anymore. And he's going to rule and reign. It'll look like something that we've seen in our past. And just Jesus comes on the scene. And he disappoints them at a rate in which they can handle. Let's, no, no, no. It's actually my kingdom is not going to look like that at all. There's something more to this. I think another great example in the Old Testament would be uh, Nehemiah and Ezra, how Israel has, has find itself and the whole city, it, it's just Jerusalem is broken down and the walls are destroyed and the temple is destroyed. And, and all of a sudden you have the people of God coming back from exile and they start rebuilding the temple. And they start rebuilding the wall. And Nehemiah, the whole book, is, is just about building a wall around the city. And, and I just think of how many more directions people may have wanted to pull Nehemiah in. Well, well, we've got to do this, and we've got to fix the irrigation system, and we've got to fix our infrastructure for uh, uh, all, all different types of things, and this part, and this part, and this part, and we're still rebuilding the temple and all this, and, and which G, uh, Nehemiah knew his part. Nehemiah said, no, no, listen, my part is to fix this wall. Like, there's going to be other people inside that are going to do different parts. And if we have this expectation of every, this, any one person has to be everything to you, wow. Man, th those are just some unrealistic expectations. We're, we're asking people to fill a void that only Jesus can fill. Only Nehemiah said, I, mean, I just got to focus on this wall. I just got, Ezra, I just got to focus on this temple. And sometimes I think we just have this idea that this one person has to be everything. And so there's this gulf that lies between our expectations and what they produce. And we could allow it to just grow and fester. And we get more and more bitter and angry and upset. And we don't produce the fruit that God wants to produce in our lives, this unrealistic expectations. The last one is this. We operate in a way that's of this world rather than of the kingdom. See, I think a kingdom people always have to have eternity in mind. They have to be focused and they have to know that, listen, we're in this world, but we're not of this world, but also that there, there's, this re, there's this reality that we're not gonna be fully satisfied in this world until like the culmination of all things. And so when we look to this world and we begin to act like this world and look for that peace and that joy through the things of this world, it's only a matter of time until we're disappointed and we're offended and we even start pointing our finger at God. Wait, I thought God, I thought this would be the thing that gave me the joy. And we're, we're, we're looking to the natural, we're looking to the now to fulfill something that is just not going to happen. See, offense is always rooted in our present rewards. Offense always says, listen, I want my rewards now rather than later. I'm offended now because of what I think is owed and deserved me now. I want it right now rather than looking at our life through the light of eternity. Rather than just saying, listen, I, I, know, I know they didn't compliment me. I know they didn't see the work that I did. I know they didn't, they didn't understand all that went into this. But you know what? It's, it, it's my glory to overlook an offense. Proverbs 19 says that. It's our, our glory to overlook an offense. It's our glory to just, you know what, just, just let it go. Man, I'm storing up treasures in heaven. I'm living for something more than what this world has to offer. In Matthew, uh, Jesus actually looks out and he sees these Pharisees that are they're just praying and they're doing it on street corners and they're just doing it to get all the attention of man. And he says, listen, they've got their reward in this life. Like, but all of that is fading. You, you live for something more. Don't worry about what people don't see. Don't worry about what people don't compliment. Don't let that be a stumbling block. Don't get offended because of that. Live for eternity. I, um, I watched a movie a long time ago called um, I can't, I, War Games, War Games. 
and uh, Matthew Broderick is in the movie. And there's a scene where they've, they've made this computer and it's a super computer and it's kind of has this self-intelligence thinking where the computer can think for itself and it's programmed to do all these war games. Uh, and so the game is if, if America bombs China, China will bomb Afghanistan, Afghanistan will then bomb America. And, and so all of these scenarios in which the computer has to work out the best case scenario uh, if you've ever seen it, it's a really good movie. And at some point, the computer begins to think that this is actually real. And so it's running through all of these scenarios and the people don't know how to stop the computer because it's really going to launch these nuclear bombs at other countries. And we just, we feel like, oh, we're about to go into nuclear war. And so the computer starts uh, running just scenario after scenario if, if if we bomb them and they bomb us and then they bomb them and what will happen and, and it's all trying to figure out how it can win it, if we do all this how can we win and so it goes through all of these scenarios and the computer's going really fast and then it just stops the screen goes blank and there's just a pause and then in, in little letters the little cursor uh, comes on this, the screen and the cursor goes the only way to win is to not play the game. The only way to win is to not play the game. And I'm telling you, when it comes to offense, the only way to win is to not play the game. Because when you get offended and then and, and this happens, man, it is, it's just building up in you just this bitterness. And so the only way is just to let it go. Hurting people hurt people. And sometimes we're the reciprocants of that. It's to understand, listen, that this person that just hurt me, there's this time, there's this chance to be offended, but I'm just not going to let it offend me. Guys, this is my prayer for 2022. That we would leave offense in the past. That we would no longer be a people that just hold all of this offense in our, in our hearts, but rather we would be a people that are in so much relationship with the Holy Spirit that as we work out this relationship with humanity, we would produce this fruit that Paul talks about in Galatians 5, that we would be a people of love and, pay, and peace and patience and kindness and self-control against these things like there is no law. I mean, we can, we're free to love. We're free to live at peace. We're free to have this joy. And I think to have it, it means laying down our rights. It means laying down what we think is owed to us. It means stop having these unrealistic expectations and for, and for looking for people to fill a hole that only Jesus can fill. It means putting our attention and our focus on the King and His kingdom and begin to live with an eternal perspective that we become more and more like Jesus and we, we deeper this relationship with the Holy Spirit. And the outworking is we have deeper relationships with our brothers and our sisters. And we demonstrate this fruit of the Spirit. This is my prayer. This is my hope as we start 2022. That we would be an army raised up that is unoffendable an army that is unoffendable. Church, these 21 days of prayer and fasting, and that we would just dig deeper into God than we ever have before. Listen, if you're out there, and, and there's two, two people right now, like you just know there's so much offense in you, just give it to God. Lay it down at the cross. You don't have to be held by that sinful nature anymore. And then the next verse, like, you're listening to this and maybe you don't know Jesus. We don't ever want to end a message without giving the opportunity for someone to come to Christ. So that's you right, just right now. You can just invite him into your life. Invite him to your heart. But don't keep it this secret. Call somebody. Get online. Text somebody. Like, let somebody know. Like, listen, I, I, just, I just gave my life to Christ. And I, I want to pursue him more like I never have before. Church. We love you. We're praying for you. Again, next week, we will be back to in-person services. So we hope to see you. Uh, 10 o'clock, 
Come Ready. And in just a few weeks, we are celebrating our 12-year anniversary as a church. We're going to have a whole lot of fun. 2022, year of breakthrough, year of, man, just the Spirit doing an incredible work in us and through us. Church, we love you. As always, grace and peace. God bless.